The anime starts with a scene of ruins and dead bodies spread out as far as the eye can reach, then gigantic footsteps are heard followed by the appearance of a massive volcanic dragon and a massive cloud of dust. Six humans are in front of him, the dragon informs them that no simple human can beat him and that they are foolish to even try. The narrator now speaks of the shadow world, the darkest tragedy humanity has ever faced, gradually enveloping their reality in black fog. Whatever the black fog covers dies, and in order to rescue the world, the shadow realm must be conquered, in order to prevent the black fog from spreading. Boromir creates a massive fireball and shoots it at them, but the fireball vanishes in midair due to the effect of one of the human spells. Boromir creates another massive fireball in its hands, but it is destroyed once more by the human's magic. The human declares that he has studied and sealed Boromir's magic. At this point three of his companions charge Boromir and he tries to swat them away with his tail. One of the humans produces a magical shield, easily blocking Boromir's strike while two others attack Boromir. The first attacker, a male, smashes the earth, while the second attacker, a female, gets blessed with the magic of the entire group by a wizard who stands far behind the group. She slays Boromir with her magically improved blade. The humans are relieved that they have defeated the dragon and can finally escape the shadow world in which they have been trapped, but the male attacker is concerned, claiming that the cleared message is late and that they may have killed the incorrect target. Another human convinces him that killing Boromir was the last thing they needed to do to rid the shadow world. We learn that there were 150 million people assigned to take down Boromir, and only six of them survived. One of the men in the group reflects on the people he fought beside and how many of them died in previous fights. He determined that it wasn't a win worth celebrating because they had sacrificed so much to obtain it, they had lost 99% of the warriors sent to defeat the great dragon and that they needed to think about the future and what that entailed. Boromir's eyes suddenly opened and he begins to glow bright red with streaks of light emanating from his breasts. The group is surprised by this incident because they assumed he was done for. The male attacker claims Boromir is no longer alive but then recalls something about dragon hearts. He informs the group of what he discovered in an old manuscript. It is said that dragon hearts do more than just pump blood, they also store and circulate mana. When dragons die the mana they have stored has nowhere to go. Boromir will explode from the mana trapped in his heart desert tries to counter the dragon's magic, but his spells are ineffective and the company prepares to die. Desser's life flashes before his eyes followed by pure whiteness. The picture shifts to a younger version of Desser standing in a corridor lined with pillars. He opens his eyes and looks down at his hands, surprised to find himself still alive. Desser hears innovation to his left and goes over to see students clapping as a woman comes up podium towards a lector. The lady greets the new students at Hebron Academy. Desser recognizes the woman and addresses her as Professor Bridget. Professor Bridget informs the students that not everyone in attendance will be accepted into the academy. She informs them that they will each take a test. She tells them the test is to clear a shadow realm and Desser says the same thing she does as if he knew she was going to say it. Desser has no idea what is going on when the professor announces the start of the 3613 admission exam. Desser moves away from the audience to a nearby wall to balance himself. Desser is surprised to find himself at the entrance exams for the year 3613, recalling that his war with Boromir began in the year 3616 and lasted 10 years. Desser begins to cry remembering the war and the losses they experienced, and laments that it was all for naught. Desser collapses to his knees absolutely defeated. The scene shifts to Desser sitting on the entry stairs to the academy, convinced that he is not in a dream because everything he sees and knows appears to be true. A female suddenly interrupts his thoughts by reaching out to him. The girl calls out to him interrupting his thoughts. She informs him that he was not present at their meeting location and inquires if he is not Desser Herman. Desser apologizes and introduces himself as Ladoria Dori Che. She informs him that she is a second year student and that she will be his mentor and she requests that he address her as Ladoria. Desser recalls her as a fire magic wielding and the top student in the academy's rankings. Ladoria approaches Desser as he is buried in thought and he admits to being apprehensive about the tests. She reassures him that it's simply a test to determine how strong he is. She checks his information on her tab and asks him whether he is a commoner. Desser says it's not a necessity for registration but even if he passes, he'll be placed in the beta class. Desser remembered the school putting nobility in the alpha class and commoners in the beta class. This meant that commoners, regardless of their magical aptitude, could never get a decent education wasting the talent of countless mages.
Desser and Ladoria walk approach a building where Ladoria enters a door with her key card, suddenly speakers erected in the corridor's echo and announcer's voice, stating that the exam will begin soon and that all candidates should meet at the test location. Desser realizes and confirms that he has returned to his past and he searches for his best buddy who died in the Battle of Boromir. Suddenly a voice from behind him tells him to quit looking around and to calm down, Desser turns around to see Romantica Eru. He is inundated with memories of her death and makes a firm commitment to prevent the tragedy from happening again by changing his world's history. Desser gives Romantica an intense look in return, he cries out her name, relieved that she is safe, but then he realizes he is in the past. She is shocked that he recognizes her name and inquires if they had ever met, Desser apologizes and informs her that he saw her name on a massive holographic screen that was projected above the arena. Desser is in the same testing group as Romantica thus Romantica wishes him luck, Desser can't help but watch her walk away. Desser recalls how heartbroken he was when he lost her and pledges never to put her in such a situation again, Desser meets up with Ladoria again and she informs him of his new group. She informs him that the first test will be a beginner level race in the Shadow World, she assures him once more that the Shadow Worlds employed in the academy are harmless and only used to assess students. She informs him of the safety mechanism in place but Elheen Triquincy interrupts her, he informs Desser that pupils are permitted to attack one another. Elheen reveals his mentee, as S. King's crown a magical knight, Desser remembers her as a magical knight of ice who wields vision magic that cannot be reversed. He also recalls her being incredibly proficient her blade, Desser believes she will be a trustworthy ally Ladoria looks her up on her student tablet but isn't overjoyed, Elheen mockingly wonders if she's alright. Ladoria tells him he got lucky in finding a talented mentee, Elheem tells her that his mentee suits his virtue which is why she was assigned a commoner as a mentee, Elheem walks away smiling and Ladoria is plainly irritated by his statement. At that point, the voice announcer announces the start of the exam for Desser's group, the speaker instructs the participants to gather at the gate. Ladoria wishes Desser luck on his journey, Desser can't help but cast a sidelong glance at Romantica and all six contestants wait before the entrance. A portal appears and all participants pass through it, everyone appears in a field surrounded by trees, the voice announcer welcomes them to the Shadow World's Ernsty Plains. The announcer shows them the finish line and goes over the rules with them, everyone lines up at the start line after hearing the regulations. Desser wonders if Azest returned with her memories after both of them survived the Battle of Boromir. Azest says Desser's entire name, he is taken aback and wonders how she knows his name. She informs him she looked him up on the list of participants, she informs him he is the lowest ranked competitor and that no matter how hard he trains, he has no future. Desser confirms that she did not return with her memories, Azest assures him that he need not be afraid of her because she has no intention of battling weak people, Desser expresses gratitude. The countdown begins and the race begins, Azest sprints away from the group leading the other in the dust, Desser and Romantica are inseparable. In her haste, Romantica knocks over a fluffy creature, she apologizes after witnessing how adorable the creature is, Desser notices she still likes such things and confronts her about it. She asks him what he means and informs him that he knows nothing about her, a flash emerged from between the trees in front of them. At that moment, Desser shoves Romantica away and the ball of flame flies past her, Desser is told to cease interfering in other people's lives by the person who fired the fireball. He decides to prioritize Desser's care, he creates a new fire assault and directs it at Desser, Romantica summons her own magic and strikes the fireball with a wind strike and this creates a dust cloud. Romantica's wind strike is still functioning unbeknownst to the attacker, it strikes the attacker inflicting great injury on him, this automatically removes him from the arena. The announcer informs him that he has been disqualified from the exam owing to prenatal harm, Desser says Romantica owes him one for saving her from disqualification, she expresses gratitude to him for watching out for her. She informs him that her blocking of the attacker's second strike has brought them even, he agrees with her, still smiling sheepishly, Romantica is visibly upset and orders him to stop making that face. 
Desser simply laughs it off, he informs her that they have a lot of territory to cover because the others were well ahead of them, Romantica informs him that she planned to save her powers for later but she has no choice but to demonstrate them now. Two runners are trailing Azest who is currently in first place into the woodland, one of them notices how swiftly she runs and believes he can finish second if he keeps up his current pace, a powerful wind blew towards him, blowing away the second contestant who was nearby. To anchor himself, he plunges his blade into the ground, when he looked up, he was taken aback to see a zest cutting through the windstorm, he admits she is a magical knight and wishes to prove himself in the same way she has. Suddenly, a tree next to him is uprooted by the force of the wind and crushes him, he is automatically removed from the arena and both players are disqualified after sustaining fatal damage according to the voice announcer. Romantica informs Desser that because there are only three individuals left they will both qualify, then her voice changes to a nasty tone and she asks Desser if he believes that's how he'll qualify. She informs him that he is the next person on her list to be eliminated, she tells him that his face irritates her so much that she can't bear seeing him qualify, Desser simply smiles at her. Romantica is enraged by his smile and prepares a devastating assault shining with a green aura, she tells Desser that she offered him an opportunity but because he didn't take it, there will be no more, she conjures up multiple magical circles in the sky. She assures Desser that her attack would be extremely painful but he should not be concerned because he cannot die in the test arena, she directs her attack at Desser, her assault creates a dust cloud. She waves goodbye to Desser and turns to go away, as he emerges from the dust cloud, Desser expresses his admiration for her ability to handle so many magical circles. Romantica returns his gaze amazed that he was not eliminated, Desser informs her that because she stresses speed with her strike she lacks control, he advises her that even a minor change in her attack trajectory will cause it to miss its objective. His arrogance irritates Romantica even more, she raises additional magical circles above her head and prepares to assault once more, she throws an attack at him and he informs her it's the same as the last time. He alters the wind's path and her attacks miss him once more, she can't believe what she's seeing. Desser performed an inverse spell to shift her assault direction which she observes, she is aware that Desser is the lowest rated magician and that only mages ranked higher than others may reversal their spells. She doubts Desser's ability to reverse her spells, she tries another attack on Desser but the result is the same, when he reverses it her magic disintegrates. Romantica can't believe her eyes once more, she mulls over the possibility of Desser having skills far superior to hers, Desser asks whether they can finish the game. He walks approaches her, claiming he has others to defeat and can't afford to waste time, Romantica is terrified and in her desperation unleashes more magical attacks than she has previously. She's attempting to overload Desser with the quantity of spells she has so that he can't reverse them, she casts several spells against him but he reverses them all. He recognizes Romantica's strength among the incoming students but he believes she is still insufficient, he believes that if she continues in this manner, she may die in the future. He determines that he must win that struggle in order for her to grow stronger, Desser and Versus all receive magical sources and Romantica appears depleted. Desser informs her that she has made multiple mistakes, he informs her that spell inversion is not the only thing he is capable of, he casts a magical charm that decreases friction on his feet. He informs her that the second thing she failed to see was that he was not battling her, he informs her that the last item she ignored was the fact that they were assessed on their ability to cross the finish line rather than their magical abilities. Desser warns her that they can't die in the test arena and trigger fire magic just behind him, Desser fire is a fireball that propels him forward with such power that he knocks Romantica over, Desser's performance as wild Romantica. Azest is nearing the finish line and rushing towards it when she notices something approaching her from behind, Desser emerges from a clump of trees behind her, driven by the flaming ball. Azest recognizes that if he is not stopped he will overrun her, she retracts her statement recognizing that he is strong, she promises to defeat him with everything she has. Desser comes to a halt, she casts so many spells preparing to attack her, he inverts them one at a time, Azest attacks before he can reverse them all but he adjusts the trajectory of her spells, and they all miss. She unleashes a massive magical strike on him, Desser modifies the trajectory of her spell, leveraging its impact force to propel himself across the finish line. She starts to draw her blade, but he brushes her aside, saying she was too concentrated on battling him, Desser crosses the finish line and is declared the group D winner. 
In a large room, everyone examines the test results, magic circles, and family histories, it is clarified that those factors will be used to allocate students to classes. The examiners observe that the alpha class does not include any commoners, naturally, this makes them happy as the alpha class ought to raise the chosen rather than the ignorant commoners. After a few minutes, everyone is checking to see where they have been assigned, Desser was placed in the beta class but he's more concerned about Romantica, who is equally surprised to be in the same class as him. The classes begin swiftly, the teacher then declares that their abilities are insufficient for the real Shadow Realms and begins mocking everyone. Romantica begins to wonder if she was passed over for the Alpha class because of the previous incident, her main issue right now is being sat near Desser's side, she's perplexed as to how he's in this class, after defeating the Magical Knight. Desser then glances at her and smiles, she becomes enraged and smashes her desk. Desser then recalls his time in the Beta class, in his talk with Bridget, Desser originally complimented her for her assistance at the orphanage. She's thrilled he remembered her and even more pleased that he grew up to be a wonderful mage. She expresses her surprise that he could defeat a Zest. She then confesses that she attempted to make him an Alpha class student, but the other pitiful professors were opposed because Desser is a commoner. Desser is irritated by everything because she apologized to him. He is aware that the nobles are erecting a barrier between themselves and the commoners in order to be perceived as superiors. However, he recognizes that they are being misled because there are so many students in beta class who will grow more stronger in the future, he then makes his selection, he intends to awaken as many talented individuals as possible. Romantica is still looking for a solution to her sadness after class, someone approaches her and inquires if she is the daughter of Baron Eru. She confirms and inquires about his identity, the man announces himself as an alpha class student named Donetta Haddon and he search of party members. He invites her to his Blue Moon party which is the best party in the academy and is only attended by the top students in the Alpha class, he explains that he wants her in his party because of her abilities and family history, she starts thinking about it, thinking she might be promoted to the Alpha class. However, something happens just as she is ready to respond, the guy grabs her hand and tells her that if she joins and she must also become his girlfriend, Romantica is perplexed and responds timidly, asking what he is on about. Like most of us, he's probably lying when he says his feelings are genuine. He spotted her at the admission ceremony and like the sad loser he is, fell in love at first sight. He takes her hand once more, remarking that a clever noble like her should not be partnered with filthy commoners in the beta class, he encourages her to join him but she wants time to think about it. Before leaving, the man takes a random gift from his pocket, he explains that people in his hometown give things to someone they love. When she opens it, she discovers a gold jewelry inside, she attempts to refuse but this pitiful playboy tells her she must accept and walks away. Desser appears from behind her frightening her to death, he remarks that she handled the fall admirably, she gets up and asks Desser what he wants. Desser boldly states that he is here to suggest the same thing he did, Romantica, of course, misinterprets it and asks who wants to be his girlfriend, Desser just responds that he didn't care about her, he merely wants her to come along to his party. She scolds him confidently stating that she was just invited to the best party in the academy, she will be successful if she joins them, especially when up against a party formed by a student in the beta class. She instructs him to go away but Desser feels compelled to use his last resort, he places a note on top of her desk and instructs her to read it while no one is looking. Of course, she assumes it's a love letter and begins mocking him, Desser on the other hand, merely tells her to throw away the letter after reading it or else something bad will happen to her. He then exits the classroom leaving her perplexed, she takes a look around before opening the letter to read it, her facial expression shifts seconds later, as if she is filled with hatred. We return to Desser, who is wondering whether Romantica will be angry or cry, he's fairly certain she'll be upset but his attention is drawn to a butterfly near another pupil. He understands that he has found the person he was looking for. This is Pram Schneider, the fastest swordsman among the soldiers who fought before Desser's return. Pram according to Desser was quite strong for someone who had little training in their initial era, but this time he'll make certain Pram becomes even stronger. Meanwhile, Romantica locates Desser and attempts to question him about the contents of the letter. Desser instructs her to keep quiet because practice is about to begin. She stares at Pram, whom she simply regards as a cute lad, just staring at his face transports her to another world. Meanwhile,
Pram examines the practice weapons and selects a magnificent sword, Desser is perplexed, and he doesn't understand why Pram chose that one. Pram then walks to the arena center and announces himself, his opponent who deserves to be punched in the face, refuses to announce himself because he is an alpha-class noble named Percival Assegunitz. The referee begins the duel and Pram charges forward, he manages to push the arrogant aristocrat back, startling him with his strength, Pram continues to strike in quick succession irritating the noble even more as he is driven back. Romantica believes Pram is quite strong but Desser feels something is up, Pram is swinging his blade about at random and the noble launches an attack and gains the upper hand. Desser on the other hand, believes Pram is capable of dealing with it, Pram deflects every attack and prepares to hit the heroic fellow, Desser recognizes that now is not the time to do it. The nobleman avoids the onslaught and knocks Pram's weapon from his grasp, Pram eventually admits defeat. Parm did his best, but he lost and Romantica recognizes this, she's also perplexed as to why Pram chose a great sword, Desser then realizes something but he must first act. The nobility was enraged by what had just occurred and punched Pram, Doser rushes up to Pram and the noble not only punches but also kicks him, he promptly picks up Pram and informs the nobility that the combat is over. Of course, this cocky guy threatens Desser to stop up or he will be treated similarly, Desser merely responds that the nobility is envious of Pram's talent, the man becomes upset and attempts to attack Desser. Desser on the other hand, not only blocks the strike, but also manages to destroy the guy's wooden sword, the noble cannot believe his eyes, but Desser questions whether the man wishes to lose his teeth after winning the duel, the noble becomes terrified and chooses to flee. Of course, he had to threaten Desser first because he is a typical loser. Pram insists on inspecting Desser's arm after the incident, Desser explains that he utilized magic to deflect the attack, therefore he's alright. Romantica eventually refers to Desire's Reckless exactly as he did during the entrance exam, Pram then completes the arm examination and apologizes to Desser, stating that it would be inconvenient for a while. Desser denies it, stating that he chose to get involved, Pram is still depressed since Desser has become an enemy of someone in the Alpha class. Romantica is having her, he's so cute at the moment but Desser warns her that she will be kicked if she doesn't calm down. He then assures Pram that he is fine because he can defeat everyone in the Alpha class. Parm then remembers he hasn't introduced himself so everyone follows him, however, because he insists on being addressed by his first name rather than his surname. Of course, when Desser does this Pram turns tomato red, Desser remains silent despite his confusion because Pram appears to be contempt. Pram thanks Desser again and departs after everything is arranged. Desser then turns to Romantica and inquires as to what she wishes to discuss with him. They go outside and she questions him about what he wrote in the letter. Desser claims that only he is aware of it, although the instructors are also aware. That's why, despite being a noble with incredible magical abilities, she was demoted to the beta class. Desser then begins telling a story about a merchant who became wealthy through commerce. He was a commoner who got wealthy enough to purchase a title from a destitute noble. Desser then describes an incident that occurred when Romantica was about four years old and that she is the merchant's daughter. He then explains how aristocrats think to her, even if her father had enough money to purchase a noble title, she was born as a commoner. As a result, she was assigned to the beta class. Desser then says that she should refuse to attend Blue Moon because it is a gathering for nobility exclusively, Romantica declines violently, explaining that the other person will defend her. Desser then asks if she recalls what he said about commoners, that recollection returns to her and she recalls the other guy stating filthy commoners. Desser explains that if the other guy finds out about her family's roots he will do something to her, he then asks her to his party again stating that if she does not attend he will, Romantica cuts him off, believing he's blackmailing her. She fears he would tell everyone she is from a commoner household but Desser is perplexed since he would never do such a thing. She asks him to explain himself and Desser simply answers that if she refuses to join, he and Pram will have to start on their own. Romantica begins to fantasize about how cute Pram will be around Desser and believes it's not fair, Desser is suspicious to her for various reasons, he's usually smiling creepily at her. He knows about her family and he's pretty reckless, however she eventually agrees to join his party. She does, however pledge to reveal all of his secrets. Desser prepares to knock on a door, he, Romantica and Pram are standing together, Romantica is a bit skeptical about his proceeding, he assures her he has spoken to some people and put everything in place. 
He knocks on the door and introduces himself. A female voice tells him to enter the office. Professor Bridget tells him he has enough members to form a party. She asks Desser to give her his reasons for wanting to form a party. Desser tells her he wants to get promoted to the Alpha class by winning the ranking tournament. Both Romantica and Pram look at Desser, shock written over her face. Professor Bridget asks him if he knows how difficult it is to accomplish his goal. He tells her he knows that. Parm asks her if getting promoted is really that difficult. She tells him it's no mere feat. She starts her explanation by telling him how the ranking tournament works. She tells him the ranking tournament is an exam done to determine the ranks of students in each grade. She tells him the exam is conducted with the Alpha and Beta class being together. The eligibility for participation is to form a party of three to six members. She tells him the exam is basically a battle between two parties and the winning party's rank goes up. She explains to them that winning the battle between parties is more than just defeating the opponents, supporting teammates, intercepting the enemies and general contribution to the battle will all be considered. She tells them, the objective of the ranking tournament is to assess the various individual skills of the students, and she tells them all the mentioned criteria are just for the qualifying round, she tells them the winning parties will participate in the final rounds. She tells them the final rounds take place in a shadow world and the top 9 ranked students are given the title of single rankings, she tells them if they can achieve the title of single ranker, they will be promoted from the beta to the alpha class. That's why the ranking tournament is also called a promotional tournament, she tells them no one has ever been promoted in the history of the academy. Romantica tells her there is no surprise that no one has been promoted, she tells the professor that the alpha class has a substantial advantage over the beta class, she tells the professor it will be completely one-sided. Professor Bridget tells her she is right because in the past the top rankers were from the alpha class, she tells them it's honestly impossible to be promoted. Desser tells her that's the very reason why he wants to be promoted, she tells them if they could become single rankers, they could be the catalyst needed to change the rotten system of the academy, Desser agrees with her, she likes his spirit and determination. Professor Bridget addresses Romantica and Pram, asking for their agreement to join Desser's party after hearing his goal, they both agree to do so and they leave the professor's office. Walking down the hallway, Romantica observes the school's training room, Romantica tells the group she didn't know the school had a place like that. Desser tells her only the Alpha class is allowed to use it, they stop at a different door and Desser tells her that's the room they will be staying in, Desser opens the door and the room looks like Shrek ran through it. It looks more like a haunted house rather than a common room, Romantica asks Desser if he's sure they are at the right place, as Romantica walks into the room the floorboards creak. Romantica and Pram complain about the floorboards and the dust covering the room but Desser assures them they can make do with it, just then the eyes of several creatures glow red. Pram faints from fear, he later wakes up sitting on the staircase leading to the training room and he walks to the doorstep and checks in on the progress of the group. The room looks entirely different, bright, clean, and cozy. Now that he's awake Desser asks him if he's ready, Romantica who has been sitting on a chair looking dejected, raises her head and tells him she's ready to go back and take a shower but Desser has other plans, he wants them to begin training. Romantica tells him she shouldn't have joined him with a heavy sigh, she agrees to join him for training, she walks away from him towards a room but Desser tells her she's going the wrong way and shows her the right room. Desser draws a circle on the wall and Romantica casts her magic, hitting the circle on the wall with it. She tells Desser she can easily hit the target, Desser tells her to try to hit the center of the circle with multiple magic strikes, she tells him it's impossible but he tells her they won't stand a chance against the Alpha class if she doesn't. Desser knows she can do it because she was able to do it in the future he came from, Desser tells her if she isn't confident enough to pull it off, she can just be a cleaner of the room till she graduates. Romantica is frustrated with Desser and his smile, Desser draws two circles some distance apart, Romantica stands in one circle and Desser gives her a ball. He tells her to get the ball into the other circle, Romantica tries to throw it but Desser stops her, telling her she must use her magic, he tells her to manipulate the air currents around the ball to push it into the circle. Romantica drops the ball on the floor and tries to concentrate, Desser asks her if wind magic is her forte and she tells him it is. He tells her to just follow the basics and push the ball just like she normally would, he tells her to envision the wind romantic concentrates and raises the ball with her wind magic. Desser is impressed she was able to grasp the concept so quickly and commence her, Romantica is pleased she got a compliment out of him.
Desser tells her to repeat the exercise while her muscle memory is still fresh, he turns to Pram, telling him it's his turn to practice. Pram is so enthusiastic, asking Desser what he would like to teach him, Desser tells him there is nothing he can teach him. Pram asks him why he can't teach him and Desser tells him he has mastered all his skills, he tells him he can win the ranking tournament as he is now, Pram doesn't believe him. Desser remembers the sword future Pram was using and decides to ask him about the sword but he's not in a divulging mood, Desser tells him he must tell him because it concerns the welfare of the party. Pram asks Desser to come with him, they arrive at a door and they both walk in, Parm picks up the sword. Pram tells Desser he doesn't know his father but he was a noble and his mother is a commoner, he tells Desser he was born out of wedlock and the sword was the only thing his father left behind. Desser asks to take a closer look at the sword and Pram presents him with it, Desser takes it from him nothing how light it is, Pram tells him he learned about the sword when he was just 6 years old. At that age he learned his father left him with the sword so he started on the path of the sword, he trained with the sword to finally see his father, but his mother always told him not to try to visit his father because he was in a different world compared to them. Pram was sad about that but his mother consoled him, Pram tells Desser his mother never told him the name of his father till she passed away, Desser thought she made a wise decision because for nobles, having a child with a commoner is a disgrace, if Parm has visited his father, he wouldn't have been alive to tell the tale. Parm tells him, he wanted to know who his father was so he enrolled at Hebron Academy to find him, and he thought he would be able to get information about his father from the different nobles coming from different countries. He took the sword to town to get it appraised, hoping to get some information about his father, but he was told the sword had no value. Pram is angry and he thought his father loved his mother so much that he left his sword to his son but Pram is sad the sword is worthless, he takes it off the table and throws it on the floor as tears stream down his face, Pram tells him he will never use the sword again Not a few days later, Pram starts training with the great sword, Desser observes his progress. Meanwhile, Romantica thinks she has completely mastered her training with the balls, Desser tells her she hasn't mastered it fully just yet, because she's not able to get the ball into the circle. Romantica is frustrated, Desser gets an idea, he rushes off to Pram and asks him to take a look at his sword again but Pram tells him he can't show him the sword because he already sold it. Desser and Pram walk through the town market district, the place looks just like Desser remembers it, Desser remembers coming to shop in these stalls before time turned back Parm stops him at the beginning of an alleyway. Parm points towards the alleyway and tells him the location is down the alleyway, they walk towards the door and Desser puts his hand on the metal door, he commends the security of the place. Desser uses the door knocker to knock at the door, the door opens and a huge man stares through the door crack at them. The man grants them in trance after looking them over. Desser and Pram walk towards the counter and Wujikian welcomes them. Desser tells him he wants to buy Pram's rapier back. Wujikian asks him if he didn't read about his no refund policy on the sign outside. Desser tells him he wants to buy the sword. Wujikian agrees and brings out the rapier. Desser walks to the counter and tells Wujikian they will take the sword for 40 silvers, dropping the coins on the counter. Desser concentrates and activates his power and he sees some inscription on the sword that makes him hold out the sword to Pram and ask him to take it, Pram is hesitant but Desser tells him to go ahead. Pram takes the sword and Desser tells him to pull a groove on the hilt with his nail. After he does this, Desser tells him to draw the sword, Pram draws the sword and the blade is glowing, both Pram and Wujikian are surprised, Pram looks over the sword and notices it's nothing like he has ever seen. Desser tells him he hasn't seen anything like it because the sword is made from a rare metal called Branzium, Wujikian asks Desser if he's sure the sword is made from Branzium. Desser tells him the metal is harder than steel but lighter than a feather and he recalls the color of the blade was the exact one Pram used in the past. Desser and Pram begin their return to the academy but the guard doesn't let them pass, Wujikian tells him he must leave the sword behind to cross the door, the guard strikes out a Desser but he dodges the sword strike easily. Wujikian tells the guard to stop goofing around, the guard wants to strike Desser again but Pram is protecting him with his sword drawn. The guard hesitates, Pram tells Desser to stay behind him and he tells the guard he can't watch him hurt Desser, Desser reminds him he said he would never use the sword again and this makes Pram embarrassed. 
Desser tells him he's just kidding and encourages him to go all out. Pram becomes confident and faces the guard. The guard charges at Pram, but Pram deftly dodges his attack. Desser thinks the sword suits Pram's combat style perfectly, but he worries Pram is inexperienced and may lose. The very next moment, both the guard and Desser look like they just saw the ghost of the Flying Dutchman. They might as well have because Pram is now covered with the sea green aura and his eyes are flowing. The guard is fired up by Pram's glow and vows to defeat him. The guard jumps into the air and strikes down at Pram who dodges it easily. The guard sword is now lodged into the wooden floor. Pram strikes at the guard, quickly injuring him a bit. The guard commands his speed. Pram keeps attacking the guard but the guard is now in a defensive position and Pram can land any fatal hits. The guard can't counter Pram either because he's too fast and strong. Pram finally ends his series of attacks and Desser thinks he's still not used to his sword. Pram lunges at the guard and strikes at him but the guard parries his strike. He's getting used to his speed now. Pram dodges the guard's attack and aims for a vital spot but the guard reads it and knocks him down. Pram's sword falls from his hands and the guard asks him if he's finished. Desser calls out to him and asks him to believe in his father. As Pram tries to grab the sword he notices the same inscription Desser notice, then this gives him an idea. Pram picks up his sword and prepares to face the guard again. Parm dodges a series of attacks from the guard deftly and goes for the guard's weak spot. The guard thinks he's caught Pram and strikes at Pram with his sword, but Pram cuts his sword cleanly in half and knocks him down with the hilt of his sword. Dessa runs over to him and asks him if he's alright. Parm is happy he was able to defeat the guard, saying he wouldn't have been able to without the sword and his father. Desser is happy for him and they prepare to leave the store. Back at the academy, Romantica keeps practicing her wind magic and finally gets a ball inside the target circle. She is happy she finally completed her test, but she's sad no one was around to see her do it. She falls to her feet but gets back up and tries out her wind magic on the ball to test her control. She hits her mark accurately which makes her overjoyed. Later in the day, Romantica stands outside the training room of the Alpha class. Donetta calls out to her and walks up to her. He thanked her for waiting. Donetta asks her if she's come to give him a reply to his earlier proposal. She tells him she has indeed come to do that. Donetta assumes her answer will be yes and tells her they better be on their way so he can introduce her to the other members of the Blue Moon Party. Romantica drops the gifts he gave her on the table and tells him she wants to return it to him. Donetta doesn't look pleased with her decision and he tells her he doesn't understand why she decided to return it. She tells him she has joined the party in the beta class. Romantica reminds Donetta of how he said the students in the beta class were commoners who were nothing more than trash. He tells her that commoners are trash. Romantica asks him if he won't make a change to his statement. Donetta tells her there's no way he was going back on those words. Romantica tells him she used to be a commoner and a grim expression crosses Donetta's face. Romantica smiles and tells him he looks scary. Donetta wipes the expression off his face and tells her to stop goofing around. She tells him she wasn't kidding and she was indeed a commoner. That's why she was put in the beta class despite the fact that she is now a noble. She tells Donetta she's fine with that and no one in her party will look at her with the same expression of disgust that he used to look at her. Donetta tells her if he knew she was once a commoner, he would never have invited her to his party. Romantica accepts her fate and gets up from the table. She tells Donetta that her party is planning to get promoted to the Alpha class which makes them enemies. Donetta vows to crush them all. Romantica tells him not to look down on them because they are in the beta class. She walks away thanking him for the meal once again. During the qualifying round of the tournament, Desser's group faces off against several groups which they easily knock out. They make it to the top 30 participants making Pram and Romantica happy. However, Desser is anticipating matching against tougher opponents. Meanwhile, Professor Pugman meets a Zest's group. Professor Pugman is angry that a beta class team could potentially be promoted to the alpha class. He loses his cool and tells the group that they can't let the beta class taint their reputation. He angrily tells the group to use any means necessary to knock out Desser's group on the last day of ranking. He tells Azess not to allow Desser's group to become single rankers. Azess recalls the race battle she lost to Desser. He was the first one to give her a taste of defeat and she wants to defeat him with everything she has. Meanwhile, Desser wonders if it's time to take Romantica and Pram's training to the next level. Desser walks into the training room to see Romantica hype. They were able to make it to the final round of the ranking test. She asks Desser what training they would be doing but Desser tells them they won't be training. Desser takes them to the library and dumps several books in front of them. 
Desser tells them they need to study history because the final round will take place in a shadow world prepared by the Academy. He tells them that historical events are recreated in the shadow worlds and they can only clear the shadow world if they can stop the incidents from happening. Romantica thinks it's impossible to know which event will be reproduced. Desser replies he picked up random events, but in reality he already knows which shadow world the test will be. Minutes later, as S walks towards Desser, Desser says it has been over two months since they saw each other and he heard that she joined Blue Moon. He commends her for making a smart choice, she asks him why and he replies that she deserves to be in the strongest party in the academy. However, she thinks the strongest party is the one Desser belongs to, she wants to tell him the reason she came to see him but he cuts her off, telling her she came to see him to declare war, she tells him she won't lose to him again. On the day of the tournament, there are four stages with portal gates leading to the Shadow World. The announcer reveals, the participants must solve a certain incident to clear the Shadow World, they are allowed to use magic, interference and other methods to clear the world. She tells them they will be disqualified if they receive fatal damage, those who contribute to clearing the Shadow World will receive more points than the top nine students will receive the title of single rankers. Pram notices they are at the bottom of the ranking table, Desser tells him they must clear the shadow world themselves or reach the top 9. The final round begins and the portal gates open, everyone steps through the gates into the portal and is placed randomly inside the shadow world, Desser spawns in the middle of a forest and decides to find his teammates. Suddenly, an ice bolt appears out of nowhere but Desser dodges it, Blue Hair appears happy that she gets to fight Desser, she prepares her ice magic and launches it towards him but Desser counters it with a fire bolt. She then creates two magic circles to launch water magic from one ring but Desser counters with fire, Blue Hair uses the second circle to turn her water column into ice. The ice column breaks launching ice shards at Desser, Desser steps back and commends her ingenuity while blocking the ice shards, she generates a tornado with the ice fragments. She tells Desser a commoner like him will never be able to use such powerful magic, she asks him for his last words but Desser calls her a weak clown, he claims that she cannot control her magic at all because she cannot aim it at his vital spots, this angers her and she tells him to shut his mouth. Desser inverses her magic and the tornado disperses, she is surprised he was able to stop her magic but then she notices his inverse magic, he tells her not to ever underestimate her opponent and creates an ice spike to fire at her. Blue Hair creates an ice shield telling Desser his commoner magic can't beat her royal garbage magic, but Desser just laughs as he eliminates her. Meanwhile, Romantica tells Pram they were lucky to be teleported next to each other. Pram asks her if Desser would be alright by himself. Romantica summons when to detect Desser's location she senses three people nearby. Two Alpha class participants emerge and tell her that she revealed her location after using detection magic. They call her a dumb beta student. Pram unsheds his sword and Romantica tells them it's time to find out who the real trash is. The male participant tells her it's a certainty they will win but Pram hardly allows him to finish his sentence before attacking him, he blocks Pram's strike and Romantica tells Pram the guy isn't so weak after all. Pram and the guy attack each other but they block each of their attacks, the guy jumps back and Pram rushes towards him but the girl casts her magic, releasing multiple balls to strike Pram. Pram dashes around them to dodge, the guy tells Pram not to get too confident and creates a cloud of dust, the guy tells his partner to use her area magic to blow Pram and Romantic away. She tries to do it, but Romantica uses the detection magic to find them and she casts a wind strike towards them, the girl is taken out and she surrounds the maids with a whirlwind, Pram comes behind him but the guy tries to strike Pram, but Pram dodges by leaping into the air. He follows Pram's path into the air and Romantica bids him goodbye, her strike eliminates him. Pram and Romantica celebrate their victory but she suddenly turns to a bush. She asks how long he's going to hide and watch them. Desser comes out and tells them that they are both doing well. A huge storm cloud slowly appears and some red lightning streaks are seen in the sky. There are just 18 participants left. Desser tells his group there are two ways they can advance to the Alpha class. The first is to clear the Shadow World and finish in first place. The second is to survive till the end and be one of the top nine participants. Romantica asks him if he thinks they can clear the Shadow World, he tells her there's no way because they will be going against the Alpha class but they can aim for the top 9. He tells them if they can eliminate 9 out of the remaining 18 parties they will be victorious, suddenly it begins raining and Pram points towards a tree they can take shelter under. Romantica asks what they should do, 
Suddenly they hear a bell and Desser tells them it's time for the prettiest clock tower. The tower shoots a beam of lightning into the sky and the announcer reveals a survival quest has begun. The participants must survive the demon attack. Desser and his party hear a scream in the distance and it is announced. There are 17 participants left. Suddenly Desser notices movement underground. The demon emerges, scaring both Pram and Romantica. They run to Desser to save them from the Kildra rat monster. Desser explains the Kildra mouse is capable of controlling swarms of rats. They feed on human blood and they never let their prey out of their sight. Romantica tries a magic attack but it's useless against the swarm. Desser tells her to keep running. They come against a huge fallen tree, Desser tells Pram to jump over the tree but Romantica refuses, he tells her she would become dinner for the rats if she doesn't and that was all the motivation she needed. They both jump over the tree but Romantica lands in her face, they keep running and Desser tells her they must kill the one controlling them, Romantica tells him they can't possibly find that one among the horde and he tells her there's a way to do so. Desser stops, bites his finger, and sprays some blood on the rats, the leader of the rats jumps towards the blood drops first, and Desser tells Romantica to use her magic. Romantica shoots a wind bullet to knock down the leader but the monster gets back up. Desser thinks Romantica became secure a 2.0 and asks them to retreat, however Pram refuses to end rushes towards the swarm of rats. The swarm swallow up Pram and he looks out for the rat leader, meanwhile, Desser is trying to get to Pram through the swarm when suddenly Pram emerges from the swarm. The announcer tells the Kildra mouse has been eliminated and the survival quest is over. Desser catches Pram as he collapses from exhaustion. They thank him for his good work and he immediately falls asleep. Desser asks Romantica to look after Pram for a bit and walks off. Desser thinks the quest could have been cleared without Pram getting injured. He thinks he became arrogant because of his growth rate and blames himself. He punches himself as a reminder to make sure his friends don't get brought down in the future. He walks back to Romantica who notices the bruise on his face. She asks him what happened but he simply asks how Pram is doing. Pram wakes up and Desser tells him they need to get going because he has found the previous clock tower. Later, a Zest group also arrives at the previous clock tower. They think they have a good chance of clearing the shadow world if they stop the clock tower. Suddenly, Azes figures that someone is using a detection magic spell. She looks up and sees several air balls coming but she uses an ice wall to shield herself. Donetta do impossible also shield themselves from the attack but the other members aren't so lucky. Azes realizes that the only person who can perform detection magic followed by an instantaneous attack is Desser. Meanwhile, Desser's group is already inside the tower and there are just 15 participants left. Azest's group quickly ran up the steps to the clock tower but they keep getting attacked. Azest predicts the direction of the attack and blocks it. They keep getting attacked by windballs. Another attack knocks Donetta and Azest off the side of the steps and Azest is almost caught by a follow-up attack but she blocks it. Romantica apologizes to Desser that her attacks were blocked. Desser tells her it's okay because it's a Zest party, Romantica tells him to move because a Zest now knows their location but Desser tells her it's fine and they should attack the next group coming in. Romantica asks him if he's crazy, she tells him if they keep attacking parties everyone will gather around them, a new group comes near the tower and Desser tells her to trust him. Romantica starts attacking the new party and she takes them out. Now there are only 13 participants left. Desser uses this chance to walk towards a wall and cast his inversion magic. Azes finally makes it inside the tower. They see two other parties who are getting ready to battle it out. Gabriel accuses Azes's group of resorting to cheap tricks just to win the tournament. Azes tells him they were attacked as well. Azest asks Gabriel's reasoning but in short, Azest should be the only student able to cast high-level magic in a row. Azest finally understands Desser's goal, nobody would ever believe that magic would be cast by a beta class student. Gabriel casts a huge flame magic spell at her but Azest appears by Gabriel's teammate's side and smashes his nose in with her feet. She uses her ice magic to freeze the female, Gabriel panics and turns to the other party to ask them for assistance. The party agrees with Gabriel and they engage. The leader shoots an arrow at Azest, but she deflects the arrow. Gabriel attacks her with the column of fire, but she counters it with her Isis. Meanwhile, Desser and his party are hiding on a floor above the others. After a while, they hear footsteps and Azest comes with her party up the stairs. Azest tells Desser that his plan failed. He aimed to make the Alpha students eliminate each other but Azest merely restrained the others without eliminating them. Desser tells her she got the better of him. 
Azest is disappointed Desser resulted in such dirty tactics, Donetta walks towards Romantico while Percival walks in front of Pram, Azest tells Desser to fight her if he wants to be worthy of the single ranker title. Azest summons an ice column that lifts her and Desser upwards, taking them to the next floor, Percival attacks Pram while he's distracted but Pram blocks it, Romantica wants to help Pram but Donetta stops her, he wants to pay her back. Desser sits on the floor and Azest tells him to get up, Desser activates his magic and several stones fly at Azest. A stone catches her on the arm and forms two serpents but she freezes them. Desser inverses the whole room and destroys Azest's ice column. Meanwhile, Pram is engaged in a heated battle with Percival. Percival keeps slashing but Pram blocks all his attacks. Percival cancels Pram's block and headbutts him. Pram almost loses his balance and Percival tells him to swing around his great sword like he did previously. Pram tells him he talks too much for someone with tiny lips. The insult hits a nerve and Percival strikes out a Pram but he dodges it. Percival keeps trying to get Pram with his attack but Pram dodges them all perfectly. Percival is wondering why his swordsmanship isn't working. Pram gets him with a kick to the torso and Percival falls on one knee. Percival asks Pram how he became so much stronger in such a short time. Pram tells him he won't answer and Percival can't believe a beta class trash is stronger than him. Romantica attacked onto with her wind strike. Donetta blocked the strike and calls her weak. Romantica isn't very good at close combat and she's running out of mana. Suddenly the ice columns break generating a mist. Donetta lose sight of Romantica, and suddenly his arm is hit by a wind strike. Another attack is cast, but he blocks at this time. Donetta figures out that Romantica uses wind magic and thinks she's pathetic. Romantica hopes to use the mist to her advantage to defeat Donetta before it dissipates. Donetta's necklace jingles and it emanates magic which dispels the mist. Romantica is surprised and Donetta attacks her. Romantica dodges his strike but she loses her balance and falls down. Donetta tries to strike her but she rolls out of danger. Romantica gets on her feet and she recognizes the necklace as the artifact Donetta once gave her. Donetta tells her it was far too good for a commoner like her. Romantica tells him commoners and nobles can't be so different since they are both students in the same school. She tells him his discrimination against commoners won't change anything. Donetta tells her everything about a noble that differentiates them from commoners. As soon as they're born, he creates a circle around her. She jumps out of the circle but he puts another one. She tries to use her magic to stop flames but he blasts her using the magic circle under her. She slams into the wall and falls to the floor. Parm runs to her to give her some help. Romantica tells Pram to hold Donetta off while she regains some mana. Donetta he uses magic to raise stone columns and crush Pram. He then jumps to strike Romantica. Pram cuts through the rocks and attacks Donetta but he dodges it. Donetta wasn't quick enough though and Pram gives him a cut on his cheek. Donetta tries to counter but Pram dodges it as well. Pram lands beside Romantica and Donetta angry that a commoner dares to attack him. Percival tells Donetta that Pram is his opponent but Donetta tells him he would defeat both Pram and Romantica. Pram tells Romantica something is wrong with Donetta because he went straight to attack her without regard for his surroundings. Romantica wonders what she's going to do since her mana is low and she can't beat Donetta without magic. Romantica doesn't want to be a burden to Pram. She asks him to take Percival somewhere else. Romantica tells Pram to leave Donetta to her so he can fight Percival alone. She's sending him away because she doesn't want to be a burden but Pram rejects her suggestion and tells her they all have to become single rankers. Romantica thanks Pram for his reassurance. Meanwhile, Azes tells Desser he has used up his bag of tricks and unlike the first exam, there is no finish line to save him. She creates an ice trail but Desser inverses it. She uses her magic circle to move around but Desser inverses it. She casts Winter Crash but he inverses it once again. Desser casts a spell of flames but Azes dodges it but before she can land properly, Desser creates a column of flames from underneath which catches Azes off guard but Azes counters the flames with a cocoon of ice. Azes can't understand how she's struggling to beat him. She outclasses him in combat skills and magic. Desser tells her she must learn to have some fun. She lunges at Desser, but he launches fireballs at her, yet she dodges them. She closes the distance, but he uses a spell to boost his strength and block her attack with a knife. She's surprised, and he tells her he's also adept with a sword. She builds up momentum and pushes Desser into the wall. 
Desser is surprised by her power but she doesn't give him time to remain amazed, she rushes at him and slashes at him continuously, he dodges each attack and a zest becomes bewildered, she wonders how she can't beat Desser though she's much stronger than him. He asks her if she's having fun but she doesn't understand what fun is, Desser tells her she probably hasn't faced a worthy opponent. Desser recalled how Azest looked so bored in the past because battles weren't a challenge to her, Desser smiles asking her what she thinks of someone she can't reach. He riles her up to beat him with everything she's got and she takes a deep breath. She tells him she may not be having fun but she will beat him, Desser tells her to come at him and she raises an ice arena with an ice throne. Desser is impressed as he can't inverse this magic because it's vision magic, she sits on the ice throne and tells Desser to prepare himself, she summons huge ice spikes from beneath his feet. Desser jumps away but she uses ice spikes to keep him in position, she then sends an ice spike but Desser uses his inverse magic to destroy them all. Desser knows she can use her magic limitlessly inside her vision magic arena, he remembered it as the trump card she used before he was brought back to the past. He's impressed she can already use it at this level, however, Desser inverses all the ice circles on the wall, he asks Azest if she's at her limit and she gets angry. She tries to summon more circles but Desser tells her attacks will never harm him, Azest notices that each of her spells is immediately inversed as soon as she casts them. She then gets an idea, she picks up her sword and brings down the ice arena surrounding her Desser sees Azest fusing her sword with magic. Meanwhile the battle between Pram and Donetta continues, Pram dodges all his attacks and kicks Donetta to the wall. Romantica asks him if he's alright, he tells her that Donetta is strong and she tells him they must take care of him before Percival decides to interfere, but at that moment Donetta asks Percival to give him a hand. Percival looks at him with the insane, asking him if he can't take care of Mayor Commoners. Percival grabs his sword to join the battle, they both rush towards Pram simultaneously. Percival jumps and throws his sword at Pram, Pram deflects but Donetta sneaking up on them from behind, Parm tries to protect Romantica but Percival and Donetta rush to Romantica and Pram from opposite sides. Suddenly time slows down allowing Romantica to analyze the situation and remember Desser's motivational speech, Romantica tells Parm to get down and she points her fingers at them, she activates her magic and blasts them away. Meanwhile, Desser sees Azes combining her magic with her sword to create a magic sword, a magic sword is the ultimate attack method that can only be used by magic knights. It takes about 10 years to master this technique but Azes was able to accomplish it in just 10 minutes, Azes rushes towards him and he uses magic to send the storm of stones at her, she turned them all to ice and disintegrated them. Desser then sends a column of flames towards her and she puts out the flames, she mocks Desser for being unable to inverse her current magic, she uses all her might to strike at him. She breaks his sword and tells Desser she has won but she's on some strong genjutsu, she then realizes he's using his inversion magic but she doesn't know what he's inverting, she looks around the room and it all begins to change form. Desser's inversion magic goes through the entire clock tower, the announcer tells the remaining participants that the quest has been cleared and the magical power of the clock tower has been severed. This is the end of the final round of the ranking tournament, Desser heaves a sigh of relief and Azes continues staring with unbelief, the announcer announces Desser is the person who cleared the quest. Professor Bridget is delighted Desser came out with the win, but Professor Pugman looks like he's holding in a colossal fart. Professor Pugman is so furious he throws his staff in frustration, he refuses to acknowledge Desser as the true winner of the quest. During a meeting between the professors and the headmaster, Professor Pugman tells them that Professor Bridget must have used some illegal means to make Desser the winner, he tells them a commoner can't outdo a magic knight and clear a shadow world himself. A professor asks him if he's accusing Professor Bridget of leaking the contents of the tournament to Desser, the professor asks him for proof, Pugman tells her a commoner like Desser clearing the shadow world is proof enough. Everyone in the meeting watched the battle in the shadow world and they didn't notice anything shady, Professor Pugman tells them to investigate. The headmaster tells one of the students to bring him his list. The professors wonder why the headmaster called the meeting since he already decided on the participants who would become single rankers. The professor tells them he wanted to get their opinions, even though they were rubbish and not worth listening to. The next day, Desser sits across from Azest. He tells her the objective of their party was to reduce the number of Alpha class men to nine by pitting them against each other. She saw right through his plans and she knew they couldn't become single rankers without defeating them. 
Desser tells her he got to the clock tower before her to analyze its content, so he had to stall for time to completely analyze it. He tells her he still had a hard time analyzing it because he was going one-on-one -on -one with her, but he would have been done for if her full squad had come at him all at once. Azes finally understands he was looking at the big picture and not focused on the battle against her, she feels she was playing into his hands the entire time and accepts defeat. Desser tells her if her sword had come a bit faster it would have been a different result. Pram and Romantica arrive and begin to threaten Azest, asking if she has any problem with Desser. Azest gets up to leave because Professor Pugman wants to see her due to her defeat. She walks away and stops at the door. She then asks Desser if she can join their training. Romantica tells her she can't but he tells her the time and location G. Romantica gets angry at Desser but he tells them they need to get going to see Professor Bridget. When they get to her office, she commends them for a job well done. However, they didn't pass the test to join the Alpha class. Romantica asks her if she's kidding and she confirms it. She just tells them she wants to surprise them. She congratulated them for being promoted to the Alpha class. They eat cake to celebrate and Bridget remembers when young Desser first approached her, he was still a young kid who asked her to teach him magic. Back then, she taught him some basic spells and he quickly mastered them, she is impressed by how strong he has gotten since then. To celebrate their promotion, the group decides to go out and have fun, however Romantica notices that Desser isn't happy about it, he explains they will be part of the Alpha class after the break but she thinks it's more than enough reason to have fun right now. Mostly because once they join they will get busy, Pram also shows up his shining hype, telling Desser to have fun, in the end our boy gives up and decides to have some fun. They enter the shopping mall where Romantica uses the time to try out several new clothes, the guys evaluate her looks but Desser doesn't seem so impressed this Prim. He simply says that she looks good on everything making her mad for his lack of excited feedback, she decides to try even new stuff but this time Desser starts giving several compliments. Romantica feels happy about herself until she notices that Desser is talking about Pram, who is also trying on new clothes. Desser then finds himself in the awkward squat position, barely holding himself because Pram is taking thousands of years to pick him a tie. Pram keeps pondering the colors and its meaning, forcing Desser to tell Romantica with his eyes that he needs some help. She tells him it's impossible because they cannot do something about Pram's indecisiveness. After 30 hundred years, they finally get Desser a necktie, Romantica even complains that Pram took way more time to pick his stuff when compared to herself. They then notice a new store and are excited to get inside. Desser thinks they're too energetic when suddenly Azes calls his name. Desser is surprised that she's there, and she asks if the shopping mall doesn't suit her. Desser denies and Azes explains that sometimes she needs a change of pace. Desser then decides to invite her to join them in the arcade, but she turns more serious than she already is. She thinks this is a chance to take revenge for the ranking battle. Desser tries to explain this as just to have fun and Azest replies she was kidding. Still, nobody really knows because she's always serious. She accepts the invitation and they decide to join Pram who's trying to get some plush from the arcade machine. He happily manages to get his teddy bear, but they freak out when they notice Desser alongside Azest. They angrily ask what is she doing there and Desser simply mentions she will have fun with them. Suddenly Azes picks up Pram as if she was a robot and places him by Desert's side. She asks if everything is better and Pram quickly turns from angry to happy. He tells her to join them and have fun. Romantica cannot believe this and calls him a traitor. Desser then notices something and points at it, asking if they should play it. They form up teams but Pram complains he wanted to be in Desser's team instead of Azest. Desser laughs it out mentioning they can be together next time but Romantica gets serious. They're about to start the game and everyone turns serious. Desser tells Romantica they're about to face the top swordsman and the magic knight in the academy, therefore she cannot let her guard down. She looks at Pram who starts showing up his aura and promises to finish the game quickly so he can join Desser's party. The disc hits the air hockey table and Pram strikes it, Desser thinks this is too fast but manages to defend, Azes tries to score but Romantica hits the disc and uses her wind magic to score a point. Pram and Azes cannot believe they just got beaten, they look at Romantica who shows her wind aura, asking if they dare to challenge her. Desser however, knows he's doomed, he tells her that magic is forbidden but Azes decides to also go serious, she hits the disc but Romantica thinks this is too easy, Azes suddenly uses her ice magic to create a wall and change the disc direction. 
Pran thinks this point was quite amazing, Desa realizes that Azest hates to lose but that only motivates Romantica to give it her all. Everyone uses their abilities to play the game, reminding Desser about their skills from his past life. This allows Azest's team to score a point they continue playing and Romantica tells Desser to pay attention. The disc is coming their way and Azest used for ice magic, Desser uses his skill to inverse the ice and smashes the disc straight into their net. Azest cannot believe it but asks if he's finally taking it serious, Desser simply replies the game is about to start. After having so much fun it's time to part a ways, Desser thanks Azest for hanging with them but she reveals that it was nice to have some fun. Romantica is pretty happy however, because they won't see Azest in the near future, Prayam and Desser is confused by that statement because not only they're on the same class, but Desser also invited her to train with them, Romantica realizes her mistakes admitting that she forgot about it. Days later, they finally entered the Alpha classroom and notice how it looks way better than the Beta one, Prayam is also happy because he got a tablet to help study, but he has a Desser's wallpaper. She's happy with all the conditions, but she's shocked to see Desser, who tells her it's time for their morning training, they get back to their training room with Azest and start warming up. Azest is assigned to train her sword skills with Pram and manages to block the attacks, Desser then shows her the magic control training that he forced Romantica to do. Azest lifts the ball to put it on the other circle but fails midway, Romantica uses this chance to show off, she lifts the ball and moves it at high speed and suddenly stops when it reaches the circle. She is proud to finally beat Azest until Desser brings out five more balls, her task is to control them at the same time and do the same, she manages to do it but Desser doesn't stop. He brings out ten balls in total and she uses them to get revenge on him, however during the training period, Romantica starts giving Azest some tips on how to control her magic. By the end of the session, Azest realizes that Desser developed an optimal training that suits everyone's aptitudes, Desser tells her they will be continuing their training after class and Azest leaves. However, Romantica is completely exhausted, she complains this session was too harsh but Dessa replies they have no time left, she asks if what he told them in the other days is true. Dessa confirms their next battle will be a real one, if they make a wrong move it could cost them their lives. Despite being rough he wants them to be stronger, Pram claims that he trusts Dessa and Romantica also gets up, mentioning she doesn't doubt him. During class, the teacher explains humanity is still at war in Shadow Worlds, she reveals this calamity happens once a year and engulfs their whole world, and that's the reason why their world lost half of its land. However, their current Shadow World subjugating rate is nearly 100%. She explains that thanks to being able to use Altia, she explains that Altia is crystallized mana that can be obtained by clearing Shadow Worlds. However, it contains a huge amount of money and cannot be used as it is. But 50 years ago the Tower of Magic managed to find a processing technique that allowed them to use Altia and as a result that mana was produced to benefits humanity, creating trains, tablets, phones between others. She asks if someone knows who created this processing technique and picks Romantica to answer, but turns out she was asleep during class and didn't know the answer for a question she didn't hear. Desser helps her by saying it was Zod Xerian, the master of the tower. The teacher confirms it's the right answer and Desser teases her telling she needs to hear the class. She complains about how hard his training sessions are but he laughs it off. The class ends and Desser's group approaches the teacher. She doesn't know their names but Desser introduces himself. She realizes he's the beta class student who became a single ranker and thinks he has some questions. Desser however, has a request for her, she thinks he wants his party to be sponsored because every party is allowed to ask for sponsorship from the Academy or the Tower of Magic. However, the application is already over, Desser replies she's wrong, he pulls a paper and tells her that's his request, she reads it and finds it weird because it's a commission form. She notices it's a Tower of Magic Hureli Guard mission. She's confused but he explains the academy should be able to give a commission to each party, the teacher confirms and Desser asks her to be allowed to have that commission. However, she rejects it because she doesn't have a reason for it, she asks why he wants the commission that he just invented. Desser asks if the regional tear Altia is kept inside the Hureli Tower branch. The teacher has a strange reaction and asks him how he knows that secret, Desser simply replies that in 10 hours a group of people will steal it, she's surprised to hear it but gets shocked when Desser says it's the outers. She thinks about the secret item and the group who wants to steal it, she then asks how he knows so much despite being a beta class student some days ago. 
Desser claims he doesn't have time to explain because if she doesn't accept the commission, the Altia will be stolen. He tells her to think again and give them the commission because she's the only person who can do it. Ten hours later, the master of the Tower of Magic receives an urgent message that Ureli Branch is under attack. The master realizes that everything was true and checks his tablet where Desser's file is open, he looks at it and asks who is Desser. Somewhere outside the tower, some guy's running with a bunch of bread in his hands, he bumps into some big iron falls but this stranger is able to levitate the food. The kid apologizes to this really serious buff dude named Kraken but the guy says it's okay and just wonders if the kid is hurt. The kid is fine so the creepy guy helps the weak little kid up, he wants to know why the kid is in such a hurry, so the kid reveals that he has a little brother waiting for him at home. His brother is starving so the big guy recommends that he hurry home, before he lets him leave though, the big guy says that the kids should be more careful since things get very dangerous at night. The situation then completely changes as the big guy surprisingly drops the bread on the ground and crushes it. This is the exact kind of trouble he was talking about so the guy says to be more careful next time. As the guy leaves, someone appears next to him wondering if they should end the kid's life. The guy decided to let him live and we see that he is heading towards the Tower of Magic. After he leaves, we see that this weak kid is actually Desser. The big guy arrives at the Tower of Magic's entrance where he puts on his mask. He tells his goons that it's time to begin and his huge army reveals itself. There are a countless number of soldiers and the big guy has them all prepare spells. He tells them to fire, so spells of fire and ice rain down on the Tower of Magic. A powerful shield protects the place but the big guy expected no less from the Great Tower of Magic. The defensive magic is incredibly powerful but this guy is sure that he can break through. He calls forward another wave of his men and declares that the tower's defense cannot block two different types of attacks at once. The second wave uses physical attacks on the tower and the big guy tells everyone to keep up the pressure. All the attacks put an immense pressure on the barrier and it eventually shatters. The goons all charge in and some guards that are inside intercept the intruders. The big guy orders his men to eliminate them all and the goons easily block the guards weak little attack. Sword fights break out everywhere but the big boss Kraken notices that the guards are wearing armor. Kraken moves forward through the battle and goes invisible. Guards on another floor go to help the others, but Kraken appears after they leave. Kraken calls them all fools, but realizes that there was something strange about their behavior. He arrives at his destination, and we see that his target is the Terravri Journal. Kraken has his men surround the magical gem, and they use every spell in the book to attack its barrier. Their attack fails, so Kraken tells everyone to get out of his way so he can take care of business. He uses a spell called Earth Rage and absolutely destroys the barrier. He crushes the box as well and is shocked by the beauty of the high tier gem, just and everyone is shocked as some girly voice calls them the outers and tells them to stop what they are doing. The girly voice actually turned out to be Pram and he tells them to surrender, they all wonder what a kid is even doing there and Kraken hides their gem. He wants to know how this kid knew that there were outers and Pram can instantly tell that this masked guy is really strong. Pram doesn't answer him so he commands his men to eliminate the kid. They try to use some magic to do the job but Pram skillfully evades it all and impressing Kraken. Pram breaks down his opponents and determines that there are two swordsmen and four mages. Their power seems to be equal to Romantica's and Pram easily destroys their magic. Their goons decide to stay back since Pram seems to be strong against magic, but they don't realize that our boy is a good close-range fighter as well and he can quickly close the gap. Kraken has had enough of watching a little kid destroy his men so he uses an entangled spell to stop Pram in his tracks. With Pram unable to move Kraken uses an earth spell to create a fist and punch Pram right in the gut. Kraken credits the little boy and his skill but points out that he just doesn't have enough experience. Kraken uses a chain spell to try and capture him but Pram tells him that it's too slow. It turns out to just be a distraction though as he captures Pram in another spell. Kraken can tell that this kid is a Hebrean student, so he wants him to learn from this experience, however he clarifies that he will have to survive this next attack first. Pram is in a real bad spot as Kraken's men unleash their attack but Romantica manages to save him just in time. She remains hidden so everyone gets really confused and she beats down on these guys. One guy even sacrifices himself to save Kraken from getting hit. Kraken notices that the attacks are not powerful enough to penetrate armor but somehow they still do serious damage, he easily blocks more of her attacks and continues his analysis. 
the accuracy, speed and number of spells make him wonder if there are more than one attackers, this attack combined with the strange behavior of the guards makes them wonder if they somehow knew they were coming. Kraken and reminds himself to stay focused on the objective and tells all his goons to cover him, the walls are on Pram Crumble and Kraken says goodbye to his opponents. Pram destroys some dudes on his way to stop Kraken but he's just met by another goon, Pram nearly overpowers this one as well but Kraken was preparing a spell before leaving. Pram gets pushed back but that was just a momentary setback, Pram then pushes forward once more but Kraken has endless amounts of magic. He is also some kind of tyrant as his next attack misses Pram but since his own goon falling through the ground, Pram can't believe this guy would do this to his own soldier but Kraken reveals that there are plenty of replacements. Pram tries to attack this evil guy but fails, and Kraken tells them that while his sword is good but his attacks are useless, Kraken begins to surround himself with rocks so Pram is best to try and break through. Kraken says it's hopeless as the rocks just keep coming and he's disappointed that Pram doesn't have more moves, not only that but he has discovered where the other attacks are coming from and he forces Romantica out from hiding. Kraken never expected that kids would interrupt his plan and he wonders who is leading them, it's clear that they knew he was coming and he wants to know how. They refuse to answer but Kraken warns them that if they don't tell him then he will make them experience something more terrifying than death, Romantica isn't scared of his threats so he attacks her. Pram has to save her so he tells Romantica to stop provoking the guy, Romantica just doesn't like this evil guy at all and launches some air balls at him showing impressive control. Kraken compliments her on her accuracy but explains that she lacks power, Romantica hits him right in the face with a rock and thanks him for the lesson. The two attacks each other but they just cancel each other out. Pram tries to attack through the confusion but Kraken is done playing with these children, he prepares another attack which Romantica can tell is really dangerous so she tells Pram to get away. Kraken uses a more powerful version of Earth Rage, destroying the whole room, Kraken gets away and we see that our heroes just barely managed to survive. They completely lost and realize that the guy was really strong, for some reason they don't seem upset at all and just think that Desser needs to train them more. We then see why they aren't upset as they wonder if they completed their part of the plan well enough. Below the tower Kraken celebrates his victory but thinks about how he didn't expect them to be prepared for his raid, he credits Zod for this preparedness but it's just glad that he succeeded in his mission. Of course he is super shocked when Desser appears to stop him, Kraken realized that it's the kid from earlier and Desser thanks him for their little encounter. Desser turned into some kind of comedian as he tells Kraken that he is there to collect payment for the bread he crushed. Kraken can't understand how Desser found him so Desser shows him, magic emits from his hand and Desser explains that he marked Kraken with his mana when they touched hands earlier. Kraken finally has the answers to all his questions, as it's clear now that Desser was the reason everyone knew about his raid, Kraken has a good laugh as he compliments Desser's move, especially since he is so young. Kraken quickly gets serious and tells Desser that he will regret everything, he prepares an attack called Doomfist that spreads through the entire tunnel, tons of fists emerge from the tunnel walls but Kraken is stunned when Desser destroys them all. Desser has proven himself so he tells Kraken that it's time for him to return what he stole, Kraken tries several times to attack Desser but he fails every time and begins to wonder if Desser is inversing his spells. Kraken determines that inversing spells would be impossible so he tries an even bigger attack, Desser makes slight work of this attack as well and reminds Kraken that all his efforts are useless. Desser approaches this fool but Kraken threatens to destroy the gem if he comes any closer, he Doe sent one Desser to take another step but Desser is completely unbothered. He tells Kraken to be his guest and angrily states that Kraken can try to do whatever he wants. Kraken has taken aback by his words but regains his composure and wonders who Desser thinks he is. He tries to counter Desser's next attack but shockingly finds himself under Desser's gravity control. Kraken is once again in disbelief and explains how no one can use the magic of this circle at such a high speed. Desser takes the gem back and Kraken is stunned when he sees the Desser somehow able to draw mana from the unprocessed gem, our MC Desser is as cold as ever, when telling Kraken that he doesn't need to know how he does it and begins to crush him. Desser pushes him further into the ground but Kraken manages to touch his mask and it stops Desser's spell, an immense power surges from Kraken's body transforming him into something that looks like a magical beast. 
Krykim reveals that he is a magical beast now and sends Desser flying with a punch. Desser was able to defend himself in time but Krykin follows that up with an even more ferocious attack. Krykin destroys the attack that Desser somehow managed to land and just gets more enraged. Desser is now dodging the attacks left and right and eventually manages to counter with a powerful fire attack. Kraken is crazy powerful now however, and use this as earth magic to send us her flying once more. Kraken explains that a split Desser's current level won't be able to hurt him so he will not let Desser decide how he wants to die, his only two options are by magic or by fist. Kraken instantly charges a Desser and refuses to give him time to inverse anything, Desser does his best to avoid the attacks but Kraken is relentless, Desser just barely manages to keep himself from being skewered and Kraken compliments him for his persistence. Kraken declares that it's over for him now though and begins summoning a weapon, Desser inverses it but Kraken managed to stop it, Kraken's weapon is complete so he demands that Desser die already. He attacks with all his power so Desser uses several defensive spells to try and stop him, Kraken refuses to be held back and pushes even harder destroying the entire area. Kraken claims victory and has a good laugh as he states that Desser should have never challenged the outers, just then Kraken, as shocked as his weapon crumbles to pieces. Desser is surprisingly unharmed and he explains that Kraken's spell was very rare, this is the reason it took him longer than usual but he has finally learned how to inverse it as well. Of course Kraken is shocked but it's too late, as Desser begins to take him apart, Kraken needs to end the fight quickly but Desser uses a gem and creates a fireball. This fireball is insanely powerful and it absolutely destroys Kraken. The defeated Kraken wonders who Desser is, but Desser thinks about how he doesn't even know. We get a glimpse of Desser's future self and he thinks about what he does know is the role he has in this time. Desser's friends arrive and they all celebrate their victory. At the Magical Tower headquarters, some random lady wonders if Desser is sure about his chosen reward for protecting Tier of Journal. Desser is certain and reveals that he has always wanted to play chess against the master of the Magical Tower. The lady thinks it's a pretty strange request but reveals that the master is pretty strange himself for accepting the request. Desser arrives at his destination and is greeted by his old friend from the future, the master of the magical tower Zod Exerion. Desser thinks about how now and also in the future, Zod is undoubtedly the strongest mage in existence, beyond that though he is Desser's irreplaceable friend. Desser tells him that he is a bit nervous and the two have a seat so they could play some chess. Zod wishes he could indulge in their game but explains that he has a meeting in 27 minutes. Zod is then stunned when this revealed that he would like to play using the herbal method, this is a strange request as Zod explains that not many people around there know how to play under those rules. Zad accepts his request and changes the game a bit, Desser remembers the future and explains to Zod that an old friend taught him how to play using these rules. It was pretty difficult but it was a fun memory of his. The two begin playing Zod quickly realizes that Desser is very skilled, Zod takes the lead in the match however, and explains that Desser still has much to learn. Zod determines that he will definitely make it to his meeting in time, if things continue this way but Desser states that he would like for them to make a wager, the loser will have to grant one wish to the winner. Zod thinks it's a bad idea since Desser is merely a student and there's no possible way he could grant anything that Zod would wish for. Desser then spots some unprocessed gems and asks to use one, Desser then extracts the mana from the gem with his bare hand shocking Zod. Zod desperately wants to know how Desser achieves such a feat but Desser tells them that the answer will be the wish he grants Zod for winning. Zod agrees and wonders what Desser would like for his wish if he wins, Desser mysteriously says that he will find out once he wins, so the wager is set and the two continue their match. Elsewhere, as S stand outside a house while the party is going on inside, Professor Pugman wonders why she isn't in there working the crowd and reveals that there are several unpleasant rumors going around. It's because she lost in the ranking tournament so he thinks it's her responsibility to clear things up, as S then shocks him when she reveals that she doesn't really care. They lost fair and square so there's no point in hiding it or lying about it, Professor Pugman gets furious as he reminds her that she is the reason they lost, if she has any issue with covering it up then he declares that she needs to quit the Blue Moon group. Azes thinks about all the new friends she has made and decides that quitting the Blue Moon group is actually a fantastic idea. Elsewhere, Desser compliments his friends on how well they did against the Outers, thanks to them they were able to recover the Terror of Rejournal, 
Romantica pretends to be pleased as well but gets really serious, she points out that the reality is neither Priam or herself had any chance against Kraken. Romantica states that they need to get stronger but knows that's what Desser was getting at all along, Priam has been wondering something and just comes out and asks why Desser trains them so hard to become stronger. Desser then shocks them as he reveals that in 12 days a shadow world will appear and they will be sent to conquer it, it won't be anything like the simulations they do in the academy. If they fail then the world will get closer to its doom and they will all lose their lives, Desser refuses to let that happen as he won't let anyone die. Romantica has come to realize that things Desser says is usually comes true, even though he is in the lowest circle, he is somehow super strong, he correctly predicted several things already so Romantica wants answers. Desser prepares to answer her but she surprisingly stops him, she desperately wants to know his secret but reminds Desser of what she said when she first joined their party. Romantica told them that she would uncover his secret no matter what, so she doesn't want him to tell her, Desser teases her a bit as he is certain that she wants to know but they all just have a good laugh. Desser gets serious again to remind them that they need to get stronger including himself, he asks his friends to stick by his side so they agree, the anime then goes into a really long montage. Desser continues training Romantica and Azest eventually goes to meet with him, Pram trains with some seaweed head that we have never seen before but it might be his long lost father that finally came back with the milk. Azest seems to ignore her old group and does some training with Desser, Pram eventually overtakes his new trainer while Desser seems to unlock some hidden power within Romantica. Azes completes her training as well and gets in a pretty awkward situation with Desser, eventually, the day Desser predicted arrives, and an alarm sound. An emergency announcement confirms that a shadow world has appeared, all students are ordered to report to the auditorium. We then see Romantica who really likes wearing the school's combat uniform, Desser tells his friends that they both look great and they arrive at the teleportation gate. Azest arrives to join them and Romantica finally accepts her as she realizes that they will need her, Desser is certain that this was the exact moment he was sent back in time for and is determined to change their fate. He makes certain that all his friends are ready for what's to come and proclaims that they will save the world. That brings the season to an end. Thanks for watching. Watch next season subscribe the channel turn on notification bell.